Welcome to Kim Talks Resilience, where we share stories of insight and inspiration in life, love, and business with resilient women from around the world. Speaking with authors, entrepreneurs, founders, and coaches to learn their strategies for a more resilient life so we can all build the life we love. I'm your host, Kim Hayden. All righty. Welcome back. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Um, you know, this whole, you've heard on previous shows where um, during COVID, which is still a relevant thing because it has shifted the way we work, right? Um, we saw this, uh, you know, assistance, which became virtual assistance, which, you know, you you had to, we, we started incorporating people into our teams that were not maybe necessarily on our block. And one of the biggest challenges that we're seeing is, is how do we embrace as we move forward? Um, you know, how do we embrace these working relationships? Uh, I myself have a, a virtual team for all of our editing on this show, uh, for, you know, the magazines we lay out, things like that. So I do have virtual assistants from, you know, Philippines to Brazil to even, you know, Canada and the United States. And there is an art to it. Absolutely an art to it. So our next guest today, Gwendolyn Young, and that is such a beautiful name. I love the way Gwendolyn rolls. It's a beautiful name. Is a true business boss. She left a 15-year career in uh, advising corporate executives to start her own company so she'd have the freedom to manage her lupus conditions. Now, at the helm of your virtual admin expert, a multi-six-figure result-driven agency of professional administrative problem solvers, and I love that, problem solvers, she brings her full spectrum of expertise to lead the company and clients to success. Backed by know-how, her high-level education in organizational leadership and business information systems, along with a pure passion for people, Gwendolyn is a recognized authority in her industry and a champion who lifts others as she climbs. She's also a published author, and we're going to be diving into her book today. So let's bring her into studio here and give me a moment. And here we go. Oh, welcome to the show, Gwendolyn. Thank you so much, Kim. So happy to be here with you. I, I'm excited. Is that is that a ClickFunnels award behind you? What is that oh. behind you? That is, oh my gosh, I, most got, people got don't. Cola. I know what that is. <laughs> so, okay, folks, just so you know, that gold record behind you is proof, absolute proof, unconditionally, that she has driven this to a seven-figure success uh, because that's what the, the comma award is for, right? It is, it? That, it is. That is what it's for. <laughs> I'm impressed. I uh, interviewed Krista Mayshore a long time ago, and oh she has seven of those. And oh my like, gosh! Yeah, she's like in Russell's like inner sphere now, right? And oh, so in the inner circle. Yeah, and when I see, and just so people know, when you take a look at that award, only nine percent of entrepreneurs will achieve that level of success. That's the crazy number. I love my numbers. I love my stats. I love my stats. So I am super excited. As soon as I saw that, I'm going, oh my God, I got a new hero. Gwendolyn, you are my hero. This is awesome. It's, it's so crazy because I. it's only there because I'm trying to figure out where it goes. And so I sat it up there as I was cleaning my office and completely forgot to move it. But most people never know what it is anyway. Oh, well, those of us who work in the online space know Russell uh, Branson. We all know the ClickFunnels. We know the Comma Awards. I mean, this is huge stuff. This is the the kind of the forefather to to funnel 
maximization to Absolutely. drive a digital voice. There's a lot of other options out there now, but the basic principles, and I think that's what Russell brought was the principles of yes. how to engage an audience, right? Um, but before we draw jump down the rabbit hole. I totally got off subject. I totally got, you should leave that there because people now are going to be going and looking and going, what is a comma award? Oh my God. What is a comma award? <laughs> so it's, it's actually very rare folks. So um, let's do this. I want to start with Gwendolyn and Young. Who are you? Can you expand, first of all, where are you, you're dialing in from today and expand a little bit on your background and also this move into an understanding, you know, managing your own personal health while still building a successful business only helps yourself. Yeah, that, that is such a loaded question, I think, but a great question. Um, so as Kim mentioned earlier, I'm Gwendolyn Young, founder and CEO of Your Virtual Admin Expert, which is an online business management and virtual assistant agency. I'm also a published author. I am also a consultant and coach and speaker. Um, I am by nature as well a wife um, of almost 30 years, can you believe it? Um, and a grandmother uh, to two beautiful little people. And I am a mom of three. And so my life is very full. And of course, mother, um, daughter, all of the things, friend, sister, auntie. <laughs> I am all of the things, but I think truly at heart, I am just a a champion for people, right? I love to see people win. I love to see people excel. I love to share information that will help people do the things that they want to do. And I think that's really, truly who I am at heart. Um, you know, this journey into this space of where I am now was based on me working in corporate America for over a decade, loving that work. I was going to be the girl to crush the glass ceiling. Um, so entrepreneurship really wasn't in my future, at least as far as I had planned it to be, Kim. <laughs> and it's a, it's a totally different animal. Like it's it a is. different Very language. Different. It's a different uh, tool set. Um, yes. my, my sister who is corporate, uh, I, I talk about Canva and she's like, what? I'm like, how do you not know what Canva is? They're Canva not in this world. <laughs> Canva, Canva has is, saved lives. Canva has saved lives and also sucked time from so yes. many entrepreneurs. We have been able to be so creative, but maybe not to scale. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I am not the best Canva creator, but oh my God, the, it opens up everything. So yes, I, I, it is a very interesting and I've gone the opposite way, but you and I have so much in common. I am 30 years married this October. Oh my gosh. I have three heel. children. I have three <sighs> children. I have two boys and a girl and I, I have, have two boys and a girl and I have two grandbabies. <gasps> Yes. So oh we are gosh. like, we are, we are We're like, like yes. yes, yes. And you have the ward I want. You have the <laughs> ward I want. I don't use ClickFunnels. Sorry, Russell. I don't use Click. <laughs> Although I have all your books, Russell. I think you're amazing. Someday I will interview him. Um, I have a different funnel system, but I am, I would, I would, I would go and get click funnels if I knew I was just right in line to get one of those awards, just so I could this see is, that I got the award. I, I'm so I think that's probably why most people use it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. Russell. It is a great system though. I will yeah. say that it is a, it is a very great system, very easy to use. He makes it super simple but to it's have him. your funnels in place. It's him. It's yeah. going to that leadership. And it's mm -hmm. going to being able to find your best self for leadership and not everybody can do it. Yes. And Russell himself is, is uh, he's so dynamic. And if you folks have not watched any of his videos, you should, because his one about the potato gun and how he started <laughs> is awesome. It is awesome. It's absolutely worth listening to. Okay. So let's get to what you do. So we've, you've transitioned from the corporate wor world, which has a mm -hmm. lot of security in it. Yes. It also has limitations to it. Yes. And one of those limitations was managing your personal health. Yes. And without health, it doesn't matter what the wealth is. It doesn't matter what anything else is, right? No. Without health, nothing else happens. So now you take on a high risk position of becoming mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. 
So tell me how you moved from uh, that that corporate mindset to the entrepreneurial mindset and leveraged your expertise to re to reduce the risk of mm. moving onto your own. Can you share that with us? Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, so that that's a great question, Kim. And so my journey was forced upon me, honestly, right? I remember very, very succinctly as if it was just yesterday when I got that diagnosis of systemic lupus. Um, you know, my husband and I had been traveling. We were in Florida and I couldn't understand why I was so exhausted. I just thought, okay, I've been busy doing a whole lot um, and got home and got up to get ready for work. And my body just would not move. It just, it would not do anything. Um, and so he got me to the doctor. Of course, she ran a battery of tests. And then I got a phone call the next day that just changed my life. And she said, um, I need you to go see a rheumatologist. And I'm like, I don't even know what a rheumatologist is. Why do I need to go see them? <laughs> And she's like, I think you need to go see the rheumatologist. I'm like, just tell me what's wrong so we can fix it. Because I'm a fixer. Let's fix it and let's move on. I have things to do. Um, and she said, I don't think this is going to be that easy. And she says, I think you have lupus. And I just went, what? Well, how do we fix it? How do we get rid of it? And so, of course, rheumatologist confirms it. And for four months, I was not even able to function right? My muscles were giving out lots of inflammation in the hospital for kidney uh, problems, lung problems. And, you know, it was very, very difficult throughout that process of recovery, probably around maybe the ninth month mark. You know, I said to my husband, I don't want to go back because I don't want to have to ask for permission when I need to take care of myself. I don't want to ask for permission when I need to see the specialist. I don't want to ask for permission or have to explain when I need a nap in the middle of the day. And he said, well, don't go back. And I said, okay, but then what am I going to do? Um, I am a person who has always been productive, right? And so I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And I clearly heard it in my spirit. God said, use your hands. It's in your hands. And I'm thinking, what does that actually mean? And so I started to think about all of the operations things and administrative functions that I did in the corporate space. And I said, I wonder if people need support in their businesses in the online space. And I found there was this entire industry that had been doing this virtually for like a decade. And I was like, what? Like my mind was just blown. And I'm like, Wow. And so I literally went head down trying to learn everything about the virtual assistant industry. How do you work virtually? How does that even work? Like, how do you connect with people? How do you find people to work with? Like, it was just this whole new profound love for me. One of the key questions you asked that was really key was like, how did I kind of transfer and navigate that transition? And so one of the things that really came on for me once I realized it could be a, a real business, because it took about six months before I got a client who was not a family member, right? My mother was my first paying client. I told her- And we know family out. doesn't pay, so- <laughs> Well, she did. She oh, actually she did. paid. Good. She actually paid. But I still tell her she can't count in the statistics because I'm like, she supports everything that I do. So I don't think it's actually fair. Uh, but my first nun family member that was a paying client took about six months. Yeah. And I'll never forget. It was a lady in Florida. And we talked over the phone. It's the first time I use a virtual tool to have a meeting with someone. And she's like, okay, let's do it. And so we worked together and I was like, oh, this is easy. I just need a computer and internet and like I can transfer files and I can do all these things. And then she goes, do you travel? And I said, do you pay to travel? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, well, then I travel. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
And Florida's nice. Florida's you know, very nice. When you're Florida's sitting in, very well, nice. <laughs> January's awesome in Florida. If you're coming from the Midwest, January's awesome in Florida. So I tell my husband, I'm like, you've got to take the weekend off because I have to go travel with a client. And I don't know who she is. Like, I literally just met this lady over the internet. And I don't know if I'm going to get to Florida and ever make it back. Like, I don't know. But we got down there and met her. It was amazing. She was having an on-site event and I was supporting there. And it was the first time I had ever seen anybody make thousands of dollars in a matter of 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And my mind was just blown. I was just like, what just happened here? Yeah. And then she started to refer colleagues. And then I said, oh, I can turn this into a real business. And so I took all of the experience from corporate and I just started applying it to my business. I said, well, we did budgets in corporate. I should probably have a budget. I said, we created policies in corporate. I should probably have policies. We'd had processes in corporate. I should probably have processes. And so I started to really work on the foundation of, okay, what happens when people come to me? How am I going to incorporate them into my business? And so I started to perfect the processes and systems in my business. And so then it became very easy for me to quickly onboard clients. And so then they started referring clients. They started referring clients. And then before I knew it, I had more work than I could do by myself. And so I said, are there other people in the virtual space who want to do this kind of work and have a passion for supporting people behind the scenes? And I found that there are tons of people who love to do that. And so I started to hire. Um, and then before you know it, we had a small team and we've got clients all across the country. Um, and it's just been a beautiful, beautiful journey. Lots of challenges, but a very beautiful oh, journey. Absolutely. Um how so when your clients come to you here's a question because this is the challenge i faced in learning the learning curve of working with people remotely i think because we rely so much on body language and yes. and being around each other that the integration of successful team members that are not in the same time zone they're not in this yes. the same block how do you help your clients learn the language of being able to have success with their virtual assistants. Oh, I love that. One of the things that very first things that we do is we actually have a kickoff call with every client. And so in this call, we actually talk about what is your vision for your business? What are the goals that you're trying to accomplish over the next 30, 60, 90 days? And then we take that information back. And we have a conversation with the person that's going to be supporting them. And then the next meeting is actually them and their support person coming together and making a connection. So we can make sure synergy is there. We can make sure everything is there that relates because we, we do really well with matching, but we like to give them that opportunity to connect and in the beginning. And in that session, we say, tell your support person what's important to you. And then the support person also gets the opportunity to say what's important to them. And so we start the foundation off understanding how do we communicate with each other? How are we going to resolve emergencies? How are we going to talk through when there's challenges? We do all of that from the very beginning with our clients. And so most of our clients are in the online space already. And so they kind of understand the language. For those who are not, we just spend the time in those first two sessions actually educating them. So we'll talk about we're going to have our meetings on Zoom, right? And we'll explain what Zoom is. It's a virtual meeting tool. We walk through making sure they know how to access it and can set it up. We talk to them about, oh, we use LastPass as a password management system. So here's how that's going to work. You're going to give us your information. We're going to securely host it in this platform. Our assistants are never going to see any of your financial data or your actual passwords, but they'll be able to access your systems. And so we we just talk about it all in those first two sessions and that that helps to put them at ease because I'm sure Kim as you know working across the virtual landscape 
it can be pretty scary to give your information to a person that you've actually never met and you've only talked to them virtually over this internet air. That can be pretty scary. And you know what? We actually did have a breach. So it's it's uh, cybersecurity is a very real thing. Yes. And as we move, I love the fact that you brought up LastPass because that's a, an actionable, that's an actual piece that people can take and start exploring yes. right now. Um, I will uh, admit that I'm probably one of the worst people for this because I'm like, you know, because I don't do online banking. Like mm. I have online banking, but I do not have anything connected to my phone or in my like. So, we, yes, we have our Stripe accounts. We have our PayPal accounts. We yes. have all those pay accounts. Yes. But those are separate from anything that is personally connected to me. But yes, but my my, you know, all my master uh, I have, you know, hundreds, hundreds of amazing interviews like yours, yes. um, all in Google and I'm giving them access to my Google. Yes. They could literally go in and accidentally delete everything. Absolutely. Right? And so, you have your email list of, yep. you know, any clients or customers that you may have worked with. You've got information from previous, you know, contractors and team members that you may have worked with. Those things are still data that has to be protected. Yep, exactly. And especially with, um, uh, you know, our, our do not call list and our privacy acts and, uh, yes. you know, all of this going on, that is, that is a real concern. That is yes. a real concern. Um, so, you know, having, I think having that orientation, but also helping a lot of people who are in this space are going to be over 40, right? Yes. Because we've, we've raised the kids. We're ready to move forward. And now we're ready to do something. <laughs> We're, we're in an expertise space, right? Yes. So, and, and, and I want everybody to know it's, it's, we need corporate, we need entrepreneurs, we need people who work for corporate and work for entrepreneurs. And we need yes. people who will lead the corporate and lead the entrepreneurship. Yes. It, it is a, an ecosystem that it, it all feeds and supports itself. So I'm not saying one is uh, better than the other, uh, just, it's, it's a, it's just a crazy transition, right? It's, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it takes a lot because it's, you, you're learning new systems, right? The systems that I'm using in the online space, I never had to use in the corporate space, right? They've never heard of a click funnels or, you know, a active campaign or convert kid or Kartra. Like they've never heard of these things. We never use those in corporate. And so you have to learn a whole new skill set in order to really survive and do good work in this space. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in, in, Building this, I mean, I would obviously finding out that you have lupus. I have a girlfriend that has MS, and and so mm. these these things don't have any cures. You have ways no. to manage them. Yes. One of them is controlling your stress, yes. your sleep, your diet, yes. right? Um, and and that's why being in the entrepreneur space, being in control, is yes. is can be such a benefit. But can you share with us in your journey of transition, a moment of true grit and resilience that had you not pushed through and how did you push through? We would mm. not be having this conversation. Can you share that with us? Yes. I remember um, one year um, my lungs were so inflamed. I could barely talk and I couldn't get anything down. Um, and then I got into the hospital and then they found inflammation in other places. So I'm having kidney problems as well. That right there, sorry, I'm getting emotional, was such a huge moment of pushing through and being resilient because I could have just given up, right? I could have just said, okay, they say I have lupus. There's no cure. The inflammation's taking over my body. I'm just going to give up and let it do what it do. But I was 
saying no, right? Like I stood strong on my faith. I had an amazing support system and I pushed through. And so what I did was I actually enlisted the support of my daughter to come in and learn some of the things about my business so that she could communicate with clients on my behalf. Um, That was such it was such a vulnerable moment for me and it was such a hard moment because I am used to being an independent person. And so when your children have to pick you up off of the floor because your muscles are giving out, when your husband has to carry you inside to the doctor because you're so fatigued and you don't have any strength, when you are taking prednisone and you've put on 50 additional pounds, the mental toll that it takes on you, not even just the physical toll, but the mental toll that it takes on you when you go from being this very capable, very powerful person that you saw yourself as to now this person who can't even make it to the bathroom by herself without falling on the floor. Big transition that you have to get through. And then trying to start a business on top of that and not knowing how your clients would respond. Right. Not knowing if you're working with people who are empathetic, with people who are patient, with people who understand, oh, this is not a good day. Um, I had to push through that. Right. I had to learn my body. I had to learn what I'm eating and how it affected me. I had to learn how stress was affecting me. And so I had to eliminate some things, right? Eliminate some people uh, because just of the stress that they bring. And so it was a very hard transition. I think it, it took a lot of grit. And if I did not push through it, I believe that lupus would have taken control of me. And so I started to change the narrative, right? I have lupus, but lupus doesn't have me, right? It's it's a very different. And so I'm a fighter by nature, Kim, if you haven't kind of figured that out. I have figured that out. (laughs) (laughs) I am not doing Black Friday for the same toast for you. I'm telling you. (laughs) (laughs) And so I was just determined that I was going to beat this thing, right? I'm like, you may get a few good rounds out of me, but I'm not going to let you win. Like, I I can't let this be the narrative that plays out in my kids' minds for the rest of their life. I can't. That just cannot be. I think there's real strength in uh, being able to ask for help because there's you have to have confidence that there's people around you that would yes. be willing to help, right? Yes. So um beyond the support of your faith in your family, was there a book or a tool or something that you utilized that helped you move forward? Oh, so many books. I love books, but I will tell you the one that was a true game changer for me, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. I devoured that book because it taught me to really lean into systems and building systems. And so I kept questioning everything. How do I build this thing that can work even if I can't? Right. That was the one thing I had in mind. It was like, how do I make this just like repeatable processes? How can a client if I'm having a bad day, but there's a new client that wants to start with me, how can they still go through the process? And I can still get on a call maybe a day or two days later when I'm feeling better. But they don't know that, right? These are things that are happening behind the scenes. So that was a book that was a super game changer for me because I really started to look at this as something that could grow into itself that didn't always have to require me. Uh, And you've you've taken uh, the initiative to publish your own book. Uh, yes. And this is really cool. Um, not everybody publishes a book. Uh, it's not easy. It's even no. with all the AI tools out there, folks, and <laughs> even with KDP and Amazon and all the accessibility, it's still not easy. You still have to have no. that follow through. So tell us a little bit about your book and what the readers can expect from the book. 
Yeah. So governing in excellence, how you govern your business determines your success was, it was a love project. So it came out of a project that I was doing in graduate school and a nonprofit that my mother has here in the Chicagoland area for teenage girls. And so in running that nonprofit, I was learning like, oh my gosh, like there's so many different things between how you govern your business versus how you manage your business that I don't think people understand. And so I was like, I don't know if people know this. So I want to take it and I want to put it into something that will help them because you have to have both. If you don't have the governance of your business, then you're literally opening yourself up to risk. You have no strategic direction. Your organization really does not have a full plan. Management is more so the day-to-day operations. How are we going to do things? How are we going to deliver the service? How are we going to serve the girls? And so in this book, you guys can expect the different steps that it takes to really build out number one, kind of this board of advisors to serve for you as your governing structure. Because even if you are a solopreneur, like many entrepreneurs are, you think it's just me. And so, oh, I don't need anybody else. Yeah. Well, sometimes when we're left to our own devices, it's not such a great thing. And so we still need to be governed. Um, And so you can expect the different steps on how to do that. You can expect steps on the different principles that are involved in making that happen. You're going to see that you'll be able to learn the differences between governing and managing so that it's super, super clear for you. And then you're going to get 12 principles. So we talk about constructive partnership and being mission driven and strategic thinking. And there's a whole Um, list of things there. And then we give you some key policies that you can consider to have in your business as well. I I love this because entrepreneurship, it's interesting because as an entrepreneur or a, a business creator, you tend to have two different personalities, right? So you'll have the salesperson. Yes. That is like, and that's me. And it's like squirrels <laughs> running everywhere. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's the reason why I have lots of people working with me. Um, so there's a lot going on and there's always there, they'll get something that 80% and then they move on to the next thing because they're always moving. And then you have the, the, the linear, the, the systems people, right? Yes. And these people are really good at building the foundation, but sometimes they're not great at, launching it. Yes. Right? So, and that's what is really fascinating me about you is that you have that linear, that ability to create the systems. And yet as your word behind you has pr- clearly proven that you've also been able to do the relatability and the sales side. Um, yeah. Is there anything in your book that helps people kind of understand that or I mean, because that's, that's, that's a huge difference. And, and how do you shift somebody like myself, who's not a systems person to become more of a systems person? Well, here's the key. You don't necessarily force them to shift. You build people around you that understand how you work and can help you do it right? That is the key to it. We don't have to come out of our natural habitat of how we operate. We just need to get the right people around us that can help us execute on it. This is why we love working with visionary CEOs like yourself, because you guys have the big grandiose visions. You know how to bring people into that and get them in. But then it's like, I did my job. I don't know what's going to happen to them now that they're here. (laughs) And that's why your operations people are so important and your support people are so important because then they say, we got it from here, Kim. Just get get the people here and we can do that. I think for me, the benefit has been because I've been in the corporate space and then transitioned to the entrepreneurial phase that I understand both sides of it. And I've worked with enough visionary CEOs from business coaches to influencers to the gamut to really understand the, the pieces, right? So you just build people around you. Like the the client that we work with, he just built a whole sales team, right? He's a great marketer. He can create content and market all day, but he doesn't want to be on the phone selling. So, okay, we need a sales team to sell the program, right? And then he did a million 
million bucks in the first year. So you don't wow. have to change. You build the people around you that can execute for you. Oh, Gwendolyn, we're going to have to talk. We're going to have to talk. I, I don't mind selling and doing all that, but man, I, I copy. Copy is always like, because copy is critical, right? Yes. As, yeah. And uh, the funnels. So, um, so in moving forward, first of all, I want to bring up all your socials because I want people to be able to find you, follow you and reach out to you. But I wanted to ask you on your website, um, what kind, what type of assets, resources, what do you have that people can get a, a bit of a flavor for what you do so they can okay. get a little orientated to you? Yeah. So on the first page at the very bottom of the site, you can opt into our newsletter and you'll get a really great goodie, which is like an assessment to find out if you're actually operating in your genius zone. Um, I have CEOs who email me all the time like, oh my God, I absolutely love this. There's also under some of the tools, there is a mini course for onboarding new clients into your business, as well as kind of what's called a business boot camp um, challenge. So you can get into any one of those that I think are really good, especially if you're in that trying to establish some processes for yourself. And and so go through all your socials. And if you can kind of, if, if there's any question on spelling, make sure you break it down for our audio, our audio audience. And folks, okay. I will have everything in the show notes that I promise you. Um, but yeah, so give us all your socials. Where can people find you, follow you, engage with you? Um, do you ask, do you answer random questions if somebody says, I do, you, random, oh, you do. I, absolutely. Absolutely. You can find me on Instagram at your admin expert. You can find me on Facebook at your admin expert. You can find me on LinkedIn at your admin expert or find Gwendolyn Young. Um, you will find me across all of those mediums. And then of course, our website at your virtual admin expert.com. And you, you also have a uh, YouTube channel. So, yes, uh, we have YouTube as well, uh, Leading Behind the Scene. And we have a podcast called Leading Behind the Scene that you can also subscribe to and listen to us on Thursdays. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Oh, I had a question. I had a question for you. Hold on one second. I have a question for it's you. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. Let's move on to, I do want to ask, um, because motivational quotes are really important. I do believe mm. having things that are like North stars, these types of things do shift and change through our careers and our lifespans. Yeah. But that's why I always ask what other people's motivational quote is and why. So I'm going to yeah. pull yours up. If you could give us your quote and tell us why this is important. Yeah. So one quote that stays with me is the proof of desire is pursuit. This is something that my mom said to me that really stayed with me because it means if you really desire something, if there's something that you really want, you will see it in the action that you're taking. And if you're not taking action towards it, then you probably don't really desire it. I agree. I do not necessarily believe in luck. I believe that we create opportunity through yes. momentum and we take action upon yes. the opportunity. So absolutely. I I am with you 110%. I remember what I was going to ask. Um when hiring virtual assistants, everybody's like always like how much does it cost? What is the, you know, how do we do this? Can you give us kind of a little bit of framework as to price and like maybe what we're, we're looking at in scaling up our team? Yeah, definitely. So you can find virtual assistants, you know, pretty much across the globe. They can be anywhere from $15 an hour up to $100 per hour, depends on the specialty or what it is that you want them to do. For our team, we're somewhere right around the $45, $50 uh, mark per hour. We work on a bundle of hours, so you do have to commit to a package. 
Um, and we also work with people who know that they have a need, right? So we're coming in to fulfill an actual need for you. Um, and so that's what you can expect. You can find them, you know, like you mentioned, the Philippines, Kenya, Brazil, here in the U.S. We are all over the place. Yeah, we have. Uh, and and this is such an opportunity because you really finding somebody that will handle a niche makes you stop and yes. think, what do you need done? Yes, and it gives, that is gives you clarity. It's the very first thing that I recommend before even talking to anyone. I would challenge the audience to sit down and really look at what are the things that I am doing on a day to day basis that don't necessarily need to be done by me and that I can delegate off with ease and I can show them the steps in the process with ease. Right. Because a lot of times I see two things happen. One, they hire and they don't understand what they want the person to do. And so they're frustrated. And then they fire the person because they say the person wasn't doing anything, but they were never clear. <laughs> and then two, they hire and they know what they want the person to do, but they haven't taken the time to document the steps in the process. And so then they just want the person to figure it out. And that doesn't work either. So you want to be clear on what you want what kind of person you want as well, because synergy personality matters. And then make sure you have documented processes that you can actually give them to do the work. Absolutely. Uh, set people up for success. Yes. That's that's the big one. Set for success and, and you won't be disappointed. You'll just grow as yes. we see by your awesome award behind you. I'm, I am a little jealous, just so you know. I Don't am. Be jealous. <laughs> It's like, oh my God, she has a woo. Did you did you get a shake Russell's hand? Yes. <laughs> yes, I got to shake his hand and uh take a picture with him. <laughs> awesome job. Gwendolyn, you are a rock star. And I am oh my gosh. Uh, I am so uh truly thrilled that you have seen the successes you've seen. Uh this is definitely a story when life gives you a lemon, you make lemonade. And uh, I, I love that. I, I, it's such inspiration. Folks, learning the right questions to ask, as we've learned this year through ChatGPT, you can get anything you want as long as you have the right prompts. And yes. sometimes you need to engage with an expert like Gwendolyn so you can grow your business, you do what you do well, and get other people to assist you with doing what they do well. Uh, Gwendolyn, you you have put a smile on my face. You have, I have, thoroughly enjoyed our time together Likewise. and I it is going to be really cool to see when you have two of those hanging up behind you ah oh, from ah. your mouth to God's ears <laughs> there you go there you go thank so, you so much Kim awesome all right folks until next time all I ask is that you give yourself a little bit of grace give yourself a whole lot of space grow your business have some fun and find amazing women like Gwendolyn to help you level up to where you belong. Until next time. Thank you for joining us here today at Kim Talks Resilience. I'm your host, Kim Hayden, and I'd love to invite you to our resilient community at resilientgift.com. That's resilientgift.com. And we'll send you our magazine and tickets for upcoming events and all sorts of cool things we do here. So be sure to keep watching and you know what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share because we all know that sharing is caring.